Hello, today I'm going to be covering comparing and ordering integers. I'm on page 205 in our textbook. All right, so to compare integers, you can compare the sign as well as the magnitude or size of the numbers. If the signs are different, the positive integer will always be greater than the negative integer. So let's look at 2 and negative 3. Since 2 is positive and 3 is negative, 2 is always going to be greater than negative 3. So we have 2 is greater than negative 3. If the signs of two integers are the same, you can use a number line to compare them. On a horizontal number line, positive numbers are graphed to the right of 0, while negative numbers are graphed to the left of 0. The greater numbers will be farther to the right. On a vertical number line, positive integers are graphed above zero, while negative integers are graphed below zero. The greater numbers are graphed farther above zero. Uh, in this section, we're going to be using um, horizontal number lines. Very rarely we'll be using um, the vertical number lines. So here's an example of a horizontal number line. Um, let's compare negative two and negative three. So we have negative two and we have negative three. Since negative 2 is further to the right, we know negative 2 is greater than negative 3. All right, let's go ahead and go to page 206. Let's go ahead and try our first example. We're going to compare two integers. Justin has a score of negative 5 on the Trueville trivia game. Desiree has a score of negative 3. It says write an inequality. Well, in order to do that, we need to figure out which one is greater, negative 5 or negative 3. So let's go ahead and graph this on our number line. Here is negative 3, and here is negative 5. Since negative 3 is further to the right, we know that negative 3 is greater than negative 5. So which number is further to the right? We know negative 3 is. We know negative 3 is greater than negative 5. All right. Since negative 3 is greater than negative 5, we know Desiree has a greater score in the trivia game. All right, so let's go ahead and check this example. Andrew and his father are hiking near Tackle Box Canyon. Their current elevation in relation to sea level is negative 38. Tackle Box Canyon has an elevation of negative 85 feet. Write an inequality to compare the elevations. So if we have negative 38, and if we have negative 83 feet, if we were to graph that on a number line, okay, I know zero would be like over here. Negative 38 would be here. Negative 83 would be way over here somewhere. So we know negative 38 is further to the right. So that is going to have the greater than sign. A little trick to help my students remember which way the inequality goes. Whichever number is bigger gets two dots, and whichever number is smaller gets one dot. So what does this mean? It means Andrew and his father, current elevation is closer to sea level than the Tackle Box Canyon. Current elevation is closer to sea level. Then Tackle Box Canyon. All right, let's go ahead. I'm on page 207, example two. The table shows the lowest accessible elevations for several continents. Order the continents from least to greatest according to their lowest elevation. So um, the textbook already went ahead and graphed on the number line for us. So they graphed negative 15, which is between negative 10 and negative 20. We put it negative 50 negative 86, which is between negative 80 and negative 90, and negative 105, which is between negative 100 and negative 110. It says, which continent 
has the least accessible elevation. So when we're looking at this, we're looking for the smallest number on our number line. So the one that is graphed is right here, negative 105. And that is right here, and that is South America. Which continent has the greatest accessible elevation? So looking at our number line, what is the greatest number that was graphed? And that is negative 15, which is Australia. All right. So the continents written in order from least to greatest elevations are South America, North America, Antarctica, followed by Australia. Okay, I'm on page 208 where it says check. Okay. The table shows Kesha's cell phone use for over the last four months. Positive values indicate the number of minutes she, used, she had remaining. And then um, the negative values indicate the number of minutes she went over. Arrange the months from fewest to the most minutes remaining at the end of each month. So let's go ahead and like roughly graph this on a number line. put zero in the middle okay I see one positive number which is 12 so let's put 12 like somewhere over here if you want to include other numbers you can like we know 12 is between 10 and 20 so we have one at 12 so that is graphed we already graphed zero um, that is at April okay now we need to graph May which is at negative 45 in February, that's a negative um, 156. Um, you know what? For over here, I'm going to go down by 50s. So negative 50, negative 100, negative 150, negative 200. I'll put 50 over here. So, uh, in May, it's at negative 45, so it's going to be close to 50. And then negative 156, that's going to be right over here. All right. So we are going from a uh, range of months from fewest to the most remaining. So the fewest minutes that we had was in February. It was at negative 156, so it's going to go February. May is at negative 45. April, she was at zero. And then in March, she was at 12. All right, I'm moving on to page 209. We're talking about absolute value. You know how to order numbers when you see them on a horizontal number line? The values increase as they move right to left, move to the right, and then values decrease as they move to the left. What happens to the absolute value or magnitude of numbers as the values increase or decrease? Since absolute value is a distance a number is from zero, the absolute value increases the farther the number is from zero. As the positive value increases or moves farther from zero, its absolute value is also increased. As a negative value decreases or moves from zero, its absolute value increases. So essentially, absolute value is how far away a, the number is from zero. So suppose Cato and Ember are scuba diving. Cato dove to 25 feet below sea level. This can be represented by the integer negative 25. Ember dove 30 feet below sea level, which could be represented by negative 30. You know that negative 25 is greater than negative 30, but does not mean that Cato's depth was greater. When determining who reached a greater depth, you need to consider the magnitude of the numbers, not just their placement on the number line. The absolute value of a number takes into account the negative, the number's magnitude. What is the absolute value of negative 30? So what it's asking us is how far away is negative 30 from 0 on a number line? And that is 30. 
what is the absolute value of 25? So how far away is 25, negative 25 from zero on a number line? And that is 25. Which absolute value is greater? So what is greater, 30 or 25? And we know 30 is greater. Since negative 30's absolute value is greater than negative 25, Ember's depth is greater. So using these uh, straight lines around negative 30 and negative 25, that is how we say absolute value. So this says the absolute value of negative 30, and this says the absolute value of negative 25. All right. I'm an example three on page 210. That is the money owed by someone um, from one person to another person. It says, explain why an account balance less than $40 represents a debt greater than $40. So an example of an account balance less than $40 is negative $50. Write an inequality comparing the two amounts. So when we're talking about uh, comparing negative numbers, I always tell my kids, like, how much would you rather owe someone? Would you rather owe someone $50 or owe them $40? Well, we would rather owe someone $40. So negative 40 is greater than negative 50. Use absolute value to determine which integer represents a greater debt. So the absolute value of negative 50 is 50. The absolute value of negative 40 is 40. So which one represents a greater debt? Negative $50 represents a greater debt. An account balance less than negative 50 has a lesser value, but it also has a greater absolute value. So the account balance of negative 50 means a debt of $50, which is greater than a debt of $40. It says, for check, explain why an account balance less than negative $5 represents a debt greater than $5. So again, if we're comparing the absolute value of negative 5 and 5, we have 5 and 5. So in this example, it says that our absolute values are the same. However, ask yourself, if you're comparing negative $5 and a positive $5, would you rather have $5 or owe someone $5? We would rather have $5. Also, if we were to graph that on a number line, we know 5 is further right than negative 5. So negative $5 is having a debt greater than a positive five dollars. Let's go ahead and go to page 211. The table shows the freezing points in degrees Celsius for six substances. Nitric acid freezes at negative 42 degrees Celsius between the freezing points of which two substances is the freezing point of the, ni of the nitric acid. Okay, so they want us to figure out which two freezing points where, where nitric acid would be at negative 42 degrees. So when I'm looking at these, where would negative 42 fall in between? So I'm going to go ahead and put those numbers on a number line. So how can you approach this? I'm going right ahead and using a number line. So I have waters at zero. Um, the first one I have is at negative six. It's going to kind of graph these all over. So I'll go up by, hmm, I'm going to do 25s. All 
All right. So the first one I have is, I'm not sure, sure if I'm saying this right, aniline at negative 6. So that's right here. It's negative 6. Um, acetic acid is at 17. Acetone is at negative 95. Carbon dioxide is at negative 78. And then C, water is at negative 2. All right. So they want to know where nitric acid would fall. And nitric acid is at negative 42, which is right here. So that falls between negative 6, which is aniline. And it also falls between negative 78, which is carbon dioxide. All right. And then it says write an argument that could be used to defend your solution. You can just um, state that you graphed it. on a number line. It's located. Between negative 78 and negative 6. All right, our last example. I'm on page 212. When a football player causes a penalty during a game, the team can lose yards on the play. The table shows the number of penalty yards certain players lost during a game, which players caused more penalty yards than Lucas. Um, not Lucas, Lewis, sorry. Okay, so Lewis caused 20. So I'm trying to figure out which numbers are greater than 20. So... One way you can do this is by using a number line. Okay. Um, I'm going to graph it from zero. The biggest number I see in this table is 30. Okay. So the smallest number I see, well, before I get started, I'll go up by fives. So I'm looking for numbers that are going to fall to the right of 20. So I see Alex is at 5, so he is out. Uh, Mattias is at 10. He's out. Chung is at 15. He's out. So the only ones that went bigger than 20, so Lewis is right here. We want uh, penalty yards that are greater than Lewis is 20. So that is Terrell, who's at 25 and then Ben, who's at 30. So these two points right here represent that Terrell and Ben cause more penalty yards than Lewis.